three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I got a new friend online, and his name is Damon. Damon, you there? I am, Damon number three. And yes, yes, I know a couple different Damons. <laughs> I met one in Asheville, and my wife's brother's name is Damon. So now I've got three. What about part of town you in, Damon? What's that? Where am I from? Yeah. Uh, just north of Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. West side with the mountains, the beautiful rocks. Yes. So, yes. I got a nice view out the front window. I did, back in 1998, I ran into some issues with uh, my businesses collapsing and I said, hell with it all. And I kind of threw it all away and I went out to California to hang with a friend of mine. Mm. And I had to drive through Utah and there's that one long road there where there's not a gas station for a long, long time. And I was on yep, I-15. <laughs> it was like a fumes and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be stuck out here in like nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's about a two hour stretch between here. You know, all the Utah residents know it well, because if you head down to Southern Utah to get some sunshine or Vegas, you know, we all know that the, there's this last gas station for a good hour and a half, two hours. <laughs> Why doesn't somebody put one in between there or something? There you go. <laughs> there's your money maker, Brad. It could be. Probably because it's too hard to get trucks to go around all those curves and stuff to drop the petrol off for you. I don't know. Who knows? No, I want to make my money with SEO and you're going to teach me. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Where do you want to start? Well, I don't know. Let's just uh, give a conversation about it because it is, uh, it's, it's that, um, you know, SEO, search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting topic because some people swear by it and others go, I have no idea. And I'm kind of yeah. one of those I have no ideas guys because you got to know the secrets and it's like, what's your take on like, how do you know what a person on the other side of the computer is typing in? And how do you, do you just, how, how do you figure out like where to start? Well, you know, there's a couple of places where to start. So for example, when a new client comes on board, then we'll go look at the obvious places like their analytics, or we'll go look at Google's AdWords planner and it kind of tells you what people are searching. But, you know, probably a better answer that I think people can use for free and, and might find interesting is there's a cool website called answerthepublic.com and it's free as well. And you can go in there and you can type it. The example I always give is shoes. So let's say we're, we sell shoes and we go in there and, and you type in shoes and it spits out this this chart that says the who, what, when, where, and why about shoes. And it's pretty cool because where it gets that data, for example, like, you know how if you go to Google and you start typing in something and, and Google says, hey, Rad, I think you might be talking about this other thing and yep. tries to auto-complete the sentence. So Answer the Public will go pull data from places like that. And where that data, what that data represents is what other people have historically searched. And so that's your audience right there, Google, and this Answer the Public site telling you very specifically what your audience is typing. So, you know, if you go type in shoes and it gives you things like, why are shoes stinky? Or how does the, the rubber soles made in shoes and things like that. So if you sell shoes, these are the types of questions that you can get your leads in the door on because they're already asking those things. So instead of you throwing mud at the wall, you go look at places like this and then, you know, start building up your authority authoritative content based around what your audience is already kind of begging to know well see that, that's kind of why i was getting at this because seo it's a long time long play game because mm -hmm. it's always changing that's why and i'll give you some props if someone like you knows how to do it it doesn't make sense for somebody to try and figure it out and do it themselves because the reality is it's always changing you type yeah. in shoes and then when someone types in like break shoes that's not your market yeah but it exactly. still comes up and everything. So you really have to be on it and almost like have your finger on the pulse of the industry or the shoe market to know what is the latest shoe. So that keyword, yeah. cause you know that it's hot. So it is a, cause, cause you got some of the, like that free thing tool you talked about that's mm -hmm. free and you kind of get what you pay for. You know, you, when you invest zero, you get 10 to fold back and now you're in a vacuum. So. And yeah. even like well, the Google one, it doesn't give you the exact what's inside of the customer's head. Yeah, that's that's really important where, where what you're bringing up is focusing on the intent because a lot of times we'll have a new client that comes on and, and we'll say, you know, what did your old SEO guys do? And, and surprisingly, more often than not, they go, I don't know. And so we say, well, what were they targeting? And, and half the time they don't even know that. And then the times that they do know, um, you know, the list is, is way off the mark. An example is we have a client that does um, contract electronic 
manufacturing. And so basically what that means is they assemble electronics, okay? Mm -hmm. So they do not make circuit boards, but they assemble them within the larger thing that their customer sells, whatever the device is. And so the reason why I bring this example up is because, um, you know, they had previously been targeting printed circuit boards. Well, at face value, that would, sounds like it would make sense. And it, it consumed like 80% of their time and their budget and all these different channels they were advertising. And we came in and we said, no, that is not your market and removed it because they don't make circuit boards. And so they couldn't monetize that. Yes, they deal with circuit boards every day, but they don't make them. They assemble them within a larger thing. And so we eliminated that and shifted their targets and, you know, saved 80% on their budget, increased their uh, conversions 50%. So yeah, you really got to look at the intent and avoid the natural reaction to go, well, this word just sounds like it makes sense. And then put in the time to do the research to really well, identify So many uh, businesses are saying, I just want traffic to my website, but that's a mm -hmm. big mistake because the world has a lot of traffic. And yeah. just because it's circuit boards doesn't necessarily mean that's the product or the person that's actually shopping for the product. You, know, you gotta yeah. get inside that, like you said, the intent kind of thing. And it really takes someone that knows what's going on. That's, that's really a customer relationship kind of thing so that you know what that customer actually sells because you, you could be driving them tons of traffic and you got yeah. spikes going on in July and everybody's coming to your website looking for circuit boards or brake shoes and you don't sell either one. So you're wasting a lot of, especially if you start doing like pay-per-click and stuff. Yeah. A pay, pay-per-click's a whole other, yeah. I mean, a good example of the pay-per-click kind of on the same topic is, you know, we, we don't do, we don't do pay-per-click because I try not to run an agency that says they do it all and then is mediocre at all of it. So we only do sense. SEO, but, but that doesn't mean that I'm not well-versed in it. And, and so to your point is, you know, a lot of times I'll see somebody that maybe sells mattresses and beds. And, and so, um, we get in to do their SEO and then I'll say, Hey, I'll just, let me just look at your pay-per-click real quick to see what kind of keyword data is in there. And they might be selling mattresses and beds and, but they don't have what's called negative qualifiers. So somebody might type in dog beds, which is not your target demographic and is not your customer that wants to buy. And so that goes into the whole intent thing, right? You, you really got to focus on the specific variation of the keyword that, makes that connection of the buyer's intent, not just a sounds good kind of keyword. Yeah. And there's, a, like I was saying, it, it really gets into the psychology of why someone's doing something like um, yeah. a popular one that I've seen is coffee shops near me. So yeah. why do they want to know where there's a coffee shop near them? Is it because they want to buy coffee or do they want free Wi-Fi? So you have yeah. to really dig into why are they typing in those yeah. words. And some of these guys are going, I'll get you a first page on Google. Well, I can do that. I did that with uh, back in, remember Netscape? Yeah, that was actually my browser of choice back in the day, yeah. Long time ago. But yeah. I, had, I was testing, how does this search engine stuff work? So I created a word, it was Bunny Hill 214. It was around mm. Valentine's Day, so I did Bunny Hill 214. Because it wasn't on the internet, that word. Yeah. So I still own that word, so I'm, Page one on Bunny Hill two and four. Because who would make type you tons it in? of money? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's you know. There's two things that you brought up there. People saying the guarantee number one, and then also your words. You know, we've talked about the intent, and so you know, who cares if you're number one for something like that? Because you're never going to be able to monetize it. And so you really want to show up. You want to you know front load your research and make sure you're targeting the right types of phrases. So you're not just on page one just to say you're on page one. It's you know for a reason. But then the other thing you pointed out is people saying, I'll guarantee you page one. So the reality is that SEO has so many wild cards and even me being in it for so long, um, you know, the, the straight shooters are the SEO guys that they, that they don't give you a guarantee because they have your back. And so what I mean by that is they want to be realistic. They will, but what they can do is they can say, Hey, based on historical trends and proven track records, I can give you a real confident expectation on how long, you know, these are things we've got to do and how long this is going to take. But if anybody comes in and says a guarantee and to, to, to make it worse is if they guarantee it within a specific time frame, it's just a sales pitch and they're just going to take your money and run because there's so many variables involved. And it, like you said, it's a long play that the, the honest guys are the ones that are going to say, Hey, I'd love to give you a guarantee, but it's just not realistic. Well, you can get a guarantee, but how long? 
you know, yeah, it'll be for a little next, while yeah. and it's going to change because <laughs> the internet is always changing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, the whole SEO thing. It's a, for me, it's a love hate relationship. I, I, <laughs> I don't have the, anything that's going on that's specific that would have someone um, work specifically on SEO because what I, my stuff is local and a lot of what I do is I just put stuff out there. I got a lot of stuff and it's mm -hmm. related to the event industry. So it right. ends up working for me. But like I said before, when a person's hiring an SEO person, there's going to be some time where that person has to learn the industry and understand it. So, so they know what those words are. And then yeah. those words kind of change. Like here's an example there in the event industry, there was a company that was called the international, um, international special events association or no society international special events society their acronym was isis mm -hmm. they changed it so all the seo that you did for isis international special events society they changed it to international live events association ilea mm. so all the seo you did for that name that you had all in people it changed yeah now you that, need yeah. to rework and if someone doesn't have the if they're not in conversation with the client, they would never know that because they're not in that industry. So you have to stay in touch with your client, right? Yeah, kind of, kind of two parts to that topic. And so in advance, you definitely want to do a lot of research ahead of time because like you said, once, once you're kind of heading down that path, it, you, you can't pivot as nimbly as you may with paid ads, you know, with paid ads, you can just kind of turn them off and on and redirect things. With social media, you're basically building a reputation with Google and other search engines. And so you really got to make sure you know what you're targeting because, because it is a long play that you don't want to throw away all that time if you have to pivot six months or a year into it. So yeah, you want to research in advance, uh, make sure you're targeting the right things right out the gates. And then definitely as you go on, you know, as, as things change, as trends change, you know, you want to be timely with those topics. And so you, you might research a content strategy, which might be something we can talk about. And six months into it, you say, well, you know, our industry has changed enough that this other thing is now more of a priority despite us doing some research a couple months ago. And so, yeah, you definitely want to keep a pulse on things to make sure you're, you're still building up that reputation for, for terms and phrases that you can still monetize effectively. Who is your specific ideal client? What industry do you target a specific industry or? No, I, we don't target a specific industry and I can actually tell you why I'm, um, we kind of stay away from that. So we don't target a specific industry because we've built out really effective processes that we can take and roll out to just about any industry. So we've documented everything and, and it makes it seamless for us to go, okay, after we do the research and identify the buyer intent and all those things we talk about, then here's the rules of how we apply that. So we can apply that pretty dynamically. Uh, but one thing I would actually say on that topic is I tend to recommend avoiding the industry specific SEOs. Um, I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but the examples I always give is let's say you find the dentist SEO guys or the attorney SEO guys. The problem that I see more often than not is that those those agencies took the time to kind of be one and done. So they researched all this content that they can write for their clients and then they just repurpose that same stuff for every single client. And the problem with that is that Google wants to rank you based on your unique authority. And if you don't have any unique content or unique value propositions because it's the same stuff repurposed for a hundred other dentists or attorneys, then you're not going to rank uniquely. So more often than not, you actually kind of want to avoid the ones that only focus on one particular industry because you know, not all of them, but I, the majority that I see is just repurposed stuff because the, the, there's such an opportunity to provide smoke and mirrors and SEO that some of those guys take advantage can, of that. Can they do it for dentists in Utah, dentists in Minnesota, dentists in Colorado, dentists in Florida? Well, that's exactly the problem is, is they might make up, um, you know, a page of content that says Damon's Dentist Shop is the best at XYZ in, in Utah. And then they take that same thing and say, Brad's dentist shop is the best at XYZ in Colorado. And then they just so it swap ends up out being similar name. content because it is kind of similar, even though it's a different state. It's yeah, it's largely identical. They just swap out the company name and the location. Yep. I can see that. And then Google will somewhat say that's, we don't like that. Yeah. 
It, well, what Google basically does is it'll say, hey, we see this over and over and over. So um, at our own discretion, we're going to decide who we think the original author is, usually based on some sort of timestamp, and then potentially penalize all the other ones. So it can actually see, do There's more harm. another good reason why people should work with someone like you. And that's what I do this for, is I try and get people to talk with you. <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because it makes sense if a person was going to start an agency and go and just duplicate stuff. Why work so hard? We can cut and paste. And they don't realize yeah. how bad that can be because Google does want unique content. So let's talk a little bit about content because you alluded to that a little bit, the whole concept of content. Yeah. So one of the one of the thing one of the things that I often get asked is like, okay, I'm a small business owner, so where do I start? Well, if you're a business owner, then you should be an expert in something, and, and that's usually what your area of services or your product is. So the easiest way that you can kind of start on SEO on your own is on that content side. And so you can use tools like that answer the public to identify maybe some ideas to talk about. But then, excuse me, what you can also do is what I like to recommend is map out a content calendar in advance because the problem that a lot of people run into is they say, okay, well, I'm gonna write, but how often do I write and what do I write about? And so it's, it's kind of hard to go, okay, I'm gonna sit down on every Friday and write. But then what if you wake up that Friday and you just got writer's block or, you know, the, the kid's appointment just threw off the rest of the day and you have all these distractions. So what I recommend is doing all the research in advance. So when you have time, you can just crank out good content because you already, you know, have a little checklist of talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. So Answer the Public is one place you can start. Um, there's another free template that I've set up. It's totally free. You can go to seonational.com slash free. There's no opt-in or anything. There's a spreadsheet on there you can download. And what's on there is I built out a 12-month calendar. And so it says these are the type of reoccurring events that are going on in January, February, March, you know, what holidays are going on, any repetitive things. And the value in that is that those are reoccurring events. Sure. And so it's not specific to 2020 or 2021 or 2015. So you can kind of go in there and say, okay, are there any easy pickings on here that I can tie in, you know, my industry to this reoccurring thing? I totally get it. I was uh, having a conversation with somebody about they're looking for content and, you know, the stability of things. And even though, you know, think days are, days are different. You don't know if it's going to be cloudy. You don't know if it's going to rain. It's going to be windy. Everything's different all the time. But the mm. Super Bowl is the Super Bowl. Exactly. Yep. And Mardi Gras is Mardi Gras. And yep. that's what happens on certain times. So you can write something around that. So you could talk about shoes or the dentists or whatever, if they can blend it in with that, then it's going to be some relevant content that's unique to them, right? Yep, exactly. That's exactly Pretty it. Cool. Well, this is interesting. This is uh, it's fun talking to SEO guys because uh, it's a. Uh, I've always been perplexed. Not really perplexed. I'm just like, how do you know what's inside that person's head that's typing something in? Because you don't. Yeah. You go to some of these uh, keyword search tools and you see the most bizarre stuff that doesn't make any sense. That's because somebody really typed it in. They did. They they don't. They typed it wrong because that's the way they spell. And it might be a good yeah. word because everybody spells it I before E except after C. What is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's you you bring up a good point where you want to identify the things that people will convert on. And so don't don't get too caught up in the the words like I want the words that have the most search volume in the world because then you attract too broad of an audience and you don't have the right buyer intent. And then Google actually pays attention to that. If you have a thousand people come to your website and one person buys, then Google says, well, that's not a very good conversion rate. But if you have only a hundred people and 10 people buy, that's an infinitely better conversion rate. So despite less visitors it's way higher buyers better conversion rate and then so google basically says okay well you know brad's site does better than the other guys it must be better experience um it must be you know better value propositions must solve the searchers problems so we're going to show that more didn't google just make some changes yeah there was an algorithm update two weeks ago um i never get really get too caught up in the algorithm updates because uh i i tend to play the safe and slow and steady approach and that's worked well for our agency we've never had a client penalized and um, just like just like this last one for the most part we're pretty neutral maybe some slight increases after algorithm changes but this last one we actually had some pretty significant increases so yeah, yeah it's gonna happen you just got to deal with it so don't get wrapped up in it because it's gonna happen right <laughs> yeah if, if you just stick to the basics of you know good good website structure and by that I mean loads quickly is mobile friendly you have good unique content 
uh, you know, if you just stick to those basics and avoid the hacky short, you know, shortcuts and black hat things, I, I, like I said, I've never been hit with a penalty. We've never had a client hit with a penalty. The content, um, do you think it's really important to have a lot of words? Because some people say you got at least 2000 words in a blog post. Do you think uh, I, I don't focus on word count, um, but maybe, maybe a better example is I can tell you how we've recently had our copywriters change our strategy. So what we used to do is on average, we used to write maybe weekly for our clients and we don't focus on word count because I don't want my writers to try and squeeze out an extra 50 words and make it sound like gibberish. Um, but we would probably average uh, before we'd average articles that were maybe 600 to 900 words. Um, but what we did is about a year and a half, two years ago, we said, let's start comparing this to longer form content. So we'd still invest the same amount of time, but instead of doing four or five blogs a month, we do two or three and we would do more research and write longer form content. So it takes the same amount of time, but we'd have a longer output. And so now we're probably averaging 1200 to 1800 words. And that brought a, a noticeable increase for our clients. So longer form does tend to perform well if it's unique and if it solves a problem and if it answers questions, but I wouldn't do it. I don't give my writers a word count at all. And so we focus on solving an actual problem or addressing an issue than you know, trying to hit a certain benchmark of words. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I see a lot of these people that have rigid guidelines behind all their stuff, but the reality is, is there are none. It's very, there's some basics, some foundational stuff, but other than yeah. that, it's just Google wants to hear about interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you want to avoid those awkward, you know, when you start getting into those rigid guidelines and sometimes it, there's a little bit of awkwardness to the flow of the article. And then, then you end up shooting yourself in the foot because then the readers, as they're reading, they, you know, something's off and they might leave quicker and not stay as long. So just stick to getting across a good message um, that showcases your expertise. Yep, I got a love hate relationship with the old automation stuff too. Like those article spinners and all that spinners, kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They just get those. you in trouble, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, Damon, I don't like doing too long because people got uh, things to do and you probably do and I do. I'm going to get this up to the internet and propagate it out there. Yeah. Hopefully I do some good SEO so someone finds it. <laughs> yeah. And if you could share it, I'll share it. That's where the synergy part comes in. How do people you get bet. a hold of you so if they, if they want to have a conversation? Uh, you know, I just wrote a book outrank, just got published last week. Oh, cool. Um, so if you want to on Amazon, to, it is, you can pick hey, up hey. a physical copy there um, in the Kindle version or if you want to go, what's to, it called again? Outrank. Outrank. All right, here. So if you want to go to freeseobook.com, I'm going to be giving away PDFs on there. Freeseobook.com. Okay. Yep. Well, I will uh, put that in the links and stuff on the, the posts that I put out, and we'll see what happens. I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. Yeah, thanks so much, Rad. Appreciate it. Okay, peace.